Welcome to Fisherman's Bay. It's a beautiful little reef located on the western edge of the Valigama Bay. The reef is quite shallow and accessible from the beach, making it ideal for beginner snorkelers. Don't be fooled by the vast flat of coral rubble that you have to cross as you wade in. If you just pause and pay attention, you will realize that even the dead corals are teeming with life. As you're heading further towards the reef, things start to get more colorful and lively. However, you have to get past the reef flat, all the way to the crest of the reef, to be truly amazed. Here, encircled by fields of green algae, walls of purple cauliflower corals dazzle under the warm sunlight in these shallow waters. Most parts of the reef are so shallow that you can only access them when the tide is high enough. Safe within these little gardens of coral, many species of fish go about their daily activities. Unfortunately, I can't spend much time here as I'm here to find a specific little creature. The fish that I'm looking for does not prefer the company of other fish and mostly hangs out alone. To find it, I head back over the reef flat into the lagoon. Here, you can sometimes find them gliding over the featureless sand dunes like grey ghosts. In the lagoon, I managed to disturb a resting green turtle. They are attracted to the sea lettuce and sea grape algae that grow in abundance on this reef. But we are looking for something far stranger than a resting turtle. Say hello to the immaculate Pufferfish. These puffers spend most of their time in lagoons, mangrove beds or shallow bays. When fully mature, they can grow up to about 30 centimeters in length. They are called immaculate pufferfish because of their pure and unmarked bodies which are usually a dull grey or an off-white. In contrast, the lips and the tail fins are yellow, as are the irises of their eyes, which gives them their other common name, the yellow-eyed puffer. Although it is hard to identify the sexes with them, the females of the species tend to be a bit rounder than the males. Juveniles and sub-adults, like this young male here, can have dark, mottled patches on their skin, which allows them to blend in with their environment for safety. This one seems to be encroaching on the adult female's territory. Puffers are not very aggressive fish, however, this male seems to be very cautious. Many fish, like this Indian vagabond butterfly fish here, use their tail fins and their body for propulsion. However, puffers move forward as well as backwards using a side-to-side or helicoid movement of their dorsal and anal fins, which is known as sculling. Their pectoral fins 
are mainly used to maintain balance and to change direction. Occasionally, they do use their thick truncated tail fin for a short burst of speed, like this little guy who is trying to get away from me. A close relative, the spot fin porcupine fish, also uses the same sculling movement for locomotion. These fish are not as easy to find as the immaculate puffer, for they prefer hiding under ledges or in caves like this. Together, porcupine fish make up the family Diatontidae, which means two teeth. Their teeth are fused together to form two teeth, one each on their upper and lower jaws. Puffers, however, belong to a group called Tetrodontidae, which means, you guessed right, four teeth. Their fused teeth on each jaw are divided in two by a median suture, effectively giving them four teeth. It's noon time on the reef. This immaculate puffer has come up to the reef flat to hunt. She is looking for small invertebrates, such as snails and crabs, that hide in the coral rubble. Her strong jaws and teeth are ideal for breaking through the tough exterior of these mollusks and crustaceans. A crab quickly scuttles under a piece of broken coral. He is safe from the puffer as long as he stays hidden. The puffer goes on with its search. Some crabs are a bit more daring, or probably curious. They are not that lucky. Pufferfish also graze on algae to some extent. Certain microorganisms ingested while grazing on algae are hosted by these puffers, with whom they form a symbiotic relationship. Within their bodies, these microbes produce a toxin known as tetrodotoxin, which is far deadlier than cyanide. This toxin gives the puffer a defensive advantage over its predators and also make them unsuitable for human consumption. Looks like this one is finishing up with her meal. I think on that note, it's time for us to leave as well. Overall, it has been a really nice day at Fisherman's Bay.